Everyone, welcome to Hellblazer Beers. Uh, it's Chris Gordon, your host as always, and today I have the proud honour and privilege of the company of Anna and Hilary Shakespeare, and also Scarlett Marshall, who stars in their latest film. So, welcome guys, thanks for joining me. Thanks, guys. <laughs> Um, yeah, so obviously your latest film, which is a soundtrack to 16. Uh, it's a good film. I've, I've, I've watched it. I say, I've, like I said to you before, I did watch it this afternoon. I did enjoy it, um, mm. which we'll talk about that as well, because it's, it's very, very good at bringing home how some things were for yourselves, I think. And I'll, I'll, I'll have to find out whether that's what we're really <laughs> going into, because I looked at it and I was watching it and thinking, that really rings quite true <laughs> from my memory uh, of a lot of things there as well. So it's, you know, it's great. So first things first, I mean, where did you come up with that idea? Because obviously you, you guys wrote it and Hillary, you, you wrote that film together. So where did you come up with the idea? Where? Well, actually I was kind of like, where you're sat in your bathroom. I was kind of on the bus because like, you know, in the bus scene in the film, there's mm. like a little bus scene, which is kind of pivotal actually in it. And, um, I was actually just on the bus listening to um, my iPod and I, I was like, I don't know, for some reason I just found this song that really reminded me of when I was 16 and it really took me back because I was like, I'm not even that much older than 16, but I had like, um, yeah, just like a bit of a flashback and then I was like, oh, it'd be cool to, um, I started putting together all the songs that reminded me of being 16 into playlists and then I thought, oh, this really, I like labeled the playlist soundtrack succeed and I thought, oh, that sounds kind of like a title for a film. I'd like to make a film about that. And then I guess the bus kind of still. Yeah, because I, I think the, type, the title of the film came about before like, the film was really formed, which was kind okay. of weird. Around, but mm. I remember like Hiro coming home and being like, I want to make a film called Soundtrack 16. And I was like, cool, what's it about? And you were like, uh, <laughs> <it's like> <laughs> 16. <laughs> <laughs> and then yeah and then we kind of like yeah and then I just remember yeah you were kind of like you put this in this in this in and then it kind of like took form a bit after that but um yeah it started off started off all from that, that past journey yeah I guess I kind of had ideas for scenes for things that kind of happened to us when we were 16 that I thought were funny it would make good scenes and then in a way it was kind of like building a story around that a little bit um yeah all right cool I was going to say you saw that. Was, is that sorry? I just changed the background as well. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, when I did look at the stories, I did wonder about that whether you actually used some of your own personal experiences uh, that you'd ha- you'd you'd gone through to write some of those stories in there because they were ve- they are very well done and and you, the actual obviously it's a coming of age tale, but you do it for great from the, both sides. Um, and, and as you were going, as you as well as self Scarlet were there. And your character, um, I've got to say that that opening scene when you're doing that inner monologue, and you walk, and your facial expressions are absolutely perfect to match that because you really get drawn straight into the character then because you're just like you know running behind that uh, behind him, like like you know when you suddenly see him, it's like shit. <laughs> it's it's really really good. <clears throat> so I kind of yeah, that's why I was any like personal experiences that you use to draw to sort of to to write that for, um, the film itself. Yeah, I mean, all of it really is kind of drawn from either personal experiences or like <clears throat> friends' personal experiences. Um, I mean, sometimes like they're extrapolated a bit, you know, I always like make this more dramatic. Yeah, than it really or like was. what would happen if this had gone really wrong? Yeah, mm-hmm. I think. But um, I mean, particularly yeah. the scene where there's a scene where the, these like mean girls are really mean to Maisie when they have a sleepover and they like leave her out. Like that kind of happened to me. And they were like, I used to like this much, now I like you this much. Someone said that to me once. So I just like really went down my memory. It's like quite a big thing. It yeah. seems so. It seemed like how would, as an adult, no one surely would ever say that. Like I used to mm. like you this much, and now I like you this much. Like it's just yeah. so. It's like not doesn't even really. It just sounds stupid. Mm. <laughs> but it's like when you're 16, I guess people do say that stuff, and that's the kind of thing I wanted to get in. But like how yeah. how teenagers act like that. Um, yeah. It's funny yeah. if you're reading like. Um, Henry's diary from back then because we're like currently working on this TV show that's sort of like semi-related about like 16 years and then we were always like oh it's good to go back into like the headspace and we literally found the entry from when that had happened I drew a diagram <laughs> for, how, for how much he liked me now how yeah. much he liked me 
And what was kind of funny is that, like, in the film, they're like, oh, for reference, we like each other that much. But in reality, she liked each other, like the other girl, less yeah. apparently than she used to like me. So I was like, it's strange that she even said that. <laughs> yeah. that that's pretty harsh. <laughs> it's like harsh to everyone here. <laughs> well, yeah, it is. I mean, yeah, that was a good scene. I mean, I saw that as well. And I was, I was again, it was reflecting. So from you, Scarlett, how did you feel playing that sort of in that in that experience in that role uh, in that uh, that scene in particular? Because it was quite. Right. It was like it was actually sometimes kind of hard to remind myself that it wasn't me. Mm. Like we spend all day on set, and I spend all day having people being horrible to me. <laughs> and I'd go home and be like, "It is fine. You do have friends. <laughs> it's not you." <laughs> <laughs> I think there was a day in particular where we were filming like so many sad scenes of you. It was like you eating sadly over a beer. It was when I ate the sandwich over the beer. <laughs> oh gosh, I can imagine. Yeah, it would be hard. Well, I mean, that's rank. I mean, I've got. I mean, I'm 16. Was for me almost 30 years ago. Uh, <laughs> but it kind of it was great because I think what the good thing about this film is it'll bring it out in everybody. I think everyone, there's part of this, each part of this film, there's going to be experiences that everyone would have had going, you know, at that age. Um, I think I can't remember sleepovers like that, but I do remember uh, for boys, it was something different. We used to get beaten up instead. You know, we, the girls, <laughs> I think the girls are very much more intellectually vindictive. Um, if I can say yeah. that without be sound, I'm not sounding sexist. Yeah. I'm just saying a girl. Yeah, like the girl beating you up. It's just yeah, like it's mentally. Yeah, <laughs> I think, yeah they, they mentally yeah. destroy you. <laughs> Whereas the, the for me, the, you know, I used to sit there and, and have to stay after school till five sometimes because it'd be like a gang of twenty or five, thirty of them just waiting for me oh at the school gates. Oh okay. So <laughs> you know, it does ring sorry, some little violin playing. Sorry, <laughs> no, but, you I don't know, wish I could fair, really. <laughs> <laughs> So it's kind of like yeah, it's very much like that, and you can you can draw those experiences, and that that's what I loved about the one of one of the films part of the film was that was very really funny. Uh, is the fact that you can actually draw back to your own experiences within it. Um, was that your kind of aim as well, was to try and get people to to ra- imagine that? Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, it definitely was my my aim when I was thinking about, it. and Anna actually wasn't even that much up because Anna had just finished school when we were shooting it, so. Mm-hmm. Quite a lot of the experiences that were happening to her were like very real for teenagers because like she was literally still a teenager, so it was quite like, yeah, yeah. We were literally taking things her friends had just said and being like, oh, that's funny. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, it's funny. Like that's kind of the most like the, the thing that people say most to us. Like, oh, it really brought me back to being that age and like yeah. Sometimes kind of in a negative way, you're like, oh god, I didn't mi- I didn't miss that. Mm-hmm. But, um, and then you're kind of like happy it's over. <laughs> then there's also the like, nice things as well. But, like, yeah, first romances are quite fun. Cool. I find I'm... like being older now, I do actually look back on even the bad things like in a positive way. I'm like, oh, mm-hmm. it's so cute that we were so horrible to each other in such a stupid <laughs> way. <laughs> but, know, like, weirdly rose tinted even the bad stuff. Yeah, I don't think yeah. I've got to that stage yet. <laughs> <laughs> Old now. <laughs> yeah, you're not old. You're not old. You're not older. Than this. <laughs> so to, remember all that. <laughs> to go back and reminisce. I mean, yeah. I, was, I mean, I can say I, thankfully I didn't have my head flushed down the toilet. That I can remember, but I know people who did. So <laughs> that's the kind of era that I was in. It was great. Well, I say it was great. It's uh, not really. <laughs> but you're right. You do look back on it, and um, I mean, you do. I mean, when he's 16 as well, because it's when when you do get to a certain age, you can look back and and, and think that. Although you, at the time it was horrible, and you went through all these experiences, like like Maisie does and Ben, they, they go through, and um, it's they get that. But as you grow older, you do look back and think that was easy. You know, now you've got taxes, mortgage. <laughs> yeah. It's like it was, it was the best time of your life, really. Um, and seeing that and how it plays out on the screen with, I loved the like the fact that you uh, as Scarlett as Daisy would you know you try and there's that sense you're trying to get in with a big girl the, the, you know the the, the the hip girls the hip crowd uh again it, that's what it felt like it was just like well you, you were moving kind of from place to place you, you know you ostracized I think is the word you felt yourself ostracized oh, I can't even speak now ostracized as a person uh, and again that's very relatable because um you couldn't. You're trying to find your identity, I think, and that's where. Oh, sorry, that's where Maisie's trying to find her identity. Um, how did you find that again? Because that's play, you're you're taking yourself back to being a 16 year old girl as well, playing that. 
So again, how did you find being able to, how did you draw, what did you draw on to, to uh, I, I mean, really I think, want me to say to say that. Sorry. <laughs> no, I had some like similarish experiences at school. Um, I think particularly early on, and girls do this a lot. You kind of move around different groups, and yeah. some end up being really popular, and some less so. Until you settle into the nice group of slightly odd but wonderful people that you know you were meant to be part of anyway. Um, so definitely, definitely school things I could draw on there. <laughs> Excellent, excellent. I mean, um, I'll, I'll just say this as well. I so that keeps bringing it back to me, but I, I did see so much of myself in, in the characters. It was Chris. It was hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> it was like, yeah, that was me. I was like, the, not the loner, but I had friends, but there, there were the, you know, we weren't the, the cool kids. Yeah. But we've just got back together, with, especially in lockdown, with the university again. And um, we oh, went to a very small university, but we were really close knit. And the groups just kicked off. and. And it's immediate, but it's immediately separated out between like what I call the football jocks and the rugby jocks and to the people who were like my group. And we've just, people I've not spoken to for 23 years have just like connected again, exactly like in the film. The, you, you, the whole purpose of the film, but you get to the end and you've, you know, you've been through all those various groups and stuff, but you finally find yourself and you've been finds yourself and you've got your little group of friends and it doesn't matter who you are in society, in that, in that sort of, you know, society, they're your friends because you all gel, you all mix together, uh, and you've all got that thing. And I've got to say, after 20, you know, we've just done that after 23 years, and it's like there's no time time separated at all because we were the geeks, basically, yeah. and the nerds. <laughs> <laughs> we, we came back together, uh, and that's our, that was our little group, and it didn't matter that you know, it had everybody else and this, that, and the other. You had that, that's, at the very end, that's what I, hopefully that's the right meaning for the film. Is I took at the end of it was that you found yourself, you found your group, and didn't, matter if they were cool or not it's cool to everybody else sorry they were cool to you obviously it's, cool. <laughs> it's funny because i feel like everyone i meet says that they were the nerdy group mine don't believe that everyone <laughs> <laughs> unless they just have very selective meetings of people yeah. like, not a bunch of people even knew they were cool that were cool yeah everyone i think, I think everyone's cool. got such low self-esteem as a teenager yeah. even like the popular kids probably don't see themselves like that necessarily yeah, maybe. Very possible. I think my my worst. Sorry, I'm not, I really don't. I'm not a narcissist, by the way. I'm just. Saying, <laughs> I'm just I'm sure, I think the best one for me was when someone said to me, "I've bumped into them from school," and they turned around and they because in school I was very you know obviously I had that insecurity. I was in, I actually thought I was fat. I was ugly. No one liked me, and I was that. I was that. That's why I drew so much out of this film because I was like that. I can sense that. Um, and someone came to me and then for the first time they'd seen me in years and sadly obviously a few stone have gone on since I was in school I was quite slim at the time they go what happened to you you were really good looking and really slim and all the girls liked you and I was like what <laughs> I was like I didn't have a single girlfriend why didn't you tell me at the time <laughs> so, you, know, <laughs> you never I'm knew sure. that stuff at the time do you no no you know so <laughs> you don't, you, that's what I mean I always thought I was the little nerd in the corner and then they were you know I find this out 30 years later, it's like, well, it's a bit late now, isn't it? <laughs> I don't know. I've definitely got some fairly incriminating teenage pictures that make me know I definitely wasn't. <laughs> yeah, thankfully, um, I've got to say, I'm old too old for mobile phones to have been around. Um, so, yeah, you've just aged me again, Scarlett. Thank you. <laughs> Actually, that was... So there was a scene in the film that I knew nothing about until we watched the film, because it was one mm. of Gino's. But it's when he's sat at a table and, like, waiting for his phone to buzz and then someone else buzzes. But that scene I loved, because, like, that excitement when you're a teenager of getting a text yeah. from someone and being like, is it that person? What have they said in their 140 character limit <laughs> that cost them 12p to send? Yeah, it's quite nice how, like, back then... Because like when you text someone, it costs money. It's like quite obvious if you like someone because you have to send them like a thirty p text. Like, why are you spending all this money mm. if you're not? <laughs> it's, yeah, it's true. Having a real like text conversation really was quite a big deal then. Yeah. I know. And like, which text do you keep in your like inbox of twelve texts yeah. that you're allowed <laughs> That's to? So true. <laughs> Yeah, I remember that, but that was a university for me. For school, we mobile phones weren't invented. Thank you. So, yeah. <laughs> uh, you really know how to make someone feel old. I'm sorry. 
<laughs> but you know, you are right. That because you, you, yeah, you get that buzz when I started at uni. It was the same. I you know, we get in the little buzz. Exactly. You got twelve messages you can send compared to how many hundreds or thousands you can save in now. It, it's a massive difference to the feeling. So, Scott, what what kind of drew you to the role then? Obviously, seeing when you read the, you read the script and everything, what drew you? What said this is this is for you? I think um, there definitely are a lot of similarities between Maisie and my experience. And I think particularly at the time, there wasn't, I hadn't seen an awful lot that showed that. Mm -hmm. Particularly American teen movies, they're so glamorized. And even the uncool people like Lindsay Lohan and Mean Girls are like super yeah. cool. <laughs> um, and aside from in us, it was like quite rare to have. So I just really liked that there was something finally showing that experience that so many of us did have. Cool. Yeah, you're right because I think that is it's definitely nice as well to, yeah, to have that from the British point of view because yeah, you are every you know, the American ones they are they're all in they're all in LA they're all like <laughs> you're right just like Lindsay Lohan regardless of whether she's meant to be playing someone ordinary at school like everyone else no it's not going to happen <laughs> I'm not yeah. saying that you're ordinary Scarlet because that's just maybe <laughs> <It's> not <laughs> fine I'll just try not um, you feel old again if that's how we're going to play this <laughs> I'm just getting my revenge then <laughs> no, but yeah no, you know what I mean yeah so it's, it's great to have that from a British perspective because the lifestyle of someone growing as a teen in Britain is a lot different to that growing up in, in America with, but there are obviously similarities too um so Hilary and Anne, you filmed this in London. Was there any reason why it was in London specifically, or is it just the fact that was that was for location? I'm just thinking about. I mean, I guess that's kind of where we. Well, it's firstly where we were living at the time, and it's where we were when we were like 16, anyways. And the school mm -hmm. that we shot the film in is the school that we went to. All right. So it's so like accurate to our lives, <laughs> um, <laughs> and some of the houses were like our parents' house, our grandma's house, and stuff like oh, that. So well, I mean, well. firstly, just practically, we had access to locations in London. Yeah. Um, yeah, and it was just where it was natural to set it because it's where a lot of that stuff did happen. So well, that's yeah. pretty cool. Yeah. Again, it makes it very much more of a personal thing, knowing that as well, mm -hmm. knowing, knowing going through. Yeah, it's super accurate. <laughs> <laughs> I grew up in Watford as well, so it was one too far from London, but it's sort of, it's a lot different to Wales. I'll tell you where I am now. <laughs> <laughs> um, excellent. So. Again, Scarlett, I mean, we've got to talk about you've brought personal experiences that you had to it as well. What was the most challenging part, the most challenging aspect of playing Maisie for you? I mean, I possibly would say that it was um, staying positive sometimes when it can be such a, like, sad role. Particularly, like, watching it back, and I'm a little bit older, so I feel like I'm watching someone younger, and I'm like, oh, that's really hard. And when I was there lifting it, it's um, it can be hard not to take it personally all the time. I think that was the hardest thing. Cool. I guess so. Um, oh, <laughs> <laughs> I know, you've got a good way of making everyone else feel bad now. <laughs> Luckily, Hillary and Anna were fantastic at keeping everyone's mood up and playing little games articulate all the time. <laughs> I had a great time. <laughs> That's the thing, and that's what I find think is hard about acting. I mean, I've only dabbled in it a little bit myself, and so I'm not anywhere near um, what I'd love to have done. But most people I speak to um, who go into that find there's always find it really it can draw a lot out of you because you can get so immersed in in what you're doing and the role that you're playing that it can be so difficult sometimes to actually separate and not go home with the same emotions. Um, so, what do you do to switch off? all sorts really <laughs> um without going to personal questions sorry <laughs> i don't know um i guess just i don't i don't have an answer okay, <laughs> maybe i don't maybe that's the problem yeah. like, just <laughs> don't switch off you're constantly on <laughs> constantly yeah. um, I think... so, so, like, when we were shooting it was so intact like the, the days are quite long and then like um, I mean, we kind of wanted them to both look, look quite like um, scrappy all the time, and mm -hmm. you know. Um, but it's funny on the bus scene, like you guys both like hadn't showered or anything. It was really <laughs> like, <laughs> and, and I was thinking like probably you didn't have that much time to turn off between days because it was like just on to the next. Yeah, obviously it was weekends, but yeah, it was quite yeah. rushed. So yeah, it was quite. 
probably were just like, oh my God, I'm tired, let's sleep. <laughs> yeah. Oh, the bus scene was, yeah. I, I normally fall asleep at nine, literally. That's me. <laughs> I'm done. So staying awake and trying to actually focus. Because that was a night shoot, so we filmed literally mm. from the sun going down to the sun rising. And wow. like, we were pretty much on the bus for like at least 80% of that time because we also <laughs> shot the bit where she leaves the house. And yeah, that was like just riding a bus for that long as well. It's just, oh, you're that was you got the smell of the fumes and everything. You just, you're just like, <laughs> not off. <laughs> he especially was like going really past it because he had to be like facing backwards. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's a nightmare. How long did it take you to film the whole thing? How long? Like, how? Yeah, I think shooting was three weeks. Ish. And then we had maybe like, yeah, a couple of days reshooting. Um, the second scene that we did the one where they buried the mouse, mm-hmm. like we shot that quite a lot later because we uh, we have like an initial edit of the whole film, and the second scene was um, was originally like yeah we shot it in the in the main shoot and then it was like it just kind of wasn't really working and I think we hadn't written it that well and also we couldn't direct it because we'd written it like. It, it was like people walking down a canal. We were trying to film it on a canal, but the canal was the, so thin, was so thin yeah. that nobody could fit there as well as <laughs> the camera and sound and, and Maisie and, um, and, and Isabel, uh, Scott as well. And like, so I remember just being like, well, I'm just going to hope this all works out because there's not space for me. <laughs> so I literally like just can't really direct it. Yeah. And I, I like just put on a martial jacket to stop people walking down. <laughs> it's just like not directing that scene. <laughs> and then I was watching it back. I was like, I know there is a reason why I need to direct. <laughs> I mean, you guys did a good job, but it's just like, yeah, you, you know, you can't, you, yeah, when you're, you have to kind of have someone with a better eye on all aspects to know that you've got them all aligning, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah, and then when you're like, have we got it? I guess so. I was just like, I hope they got it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you'll find out later on. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, and that's the thing as well, especially when you're playing with light and you, you've got tight, tight time schedules as well. Um, I, I remember the one that I was—I was only a, a featured extra um, in a film, but the, there was a scene where I, I got horrifically killed. Apparently, at the end of it, uh, which is method acting because I whacked my head on the concrete floor when I was doing it and they were like you didn't have to do that and I said I know I didn't it was an accident I've now got a splitting headache at 10 o'clock at night but the lighting so how hard was it obviously you've got your cinematographer and, you, and everyone there as well um so how how hard was it to get your lighting right and make sure because and, and rush that because otherwise we just had like LEDs and we didn't actually have people holding them so he'd just oh, be cool. like yeah. you got LED like <laughs> yep, that's right. Now I'll stay there. <laughs> yeah, the like catchphrase for our shoot was LEDs and bin bags. Because oh, we nice. just like always been bagging up stuff to make it look like night and yeah. then the LEDs but like it was like really yeah, yeah, super bad. <laughs> That's pretty decent. It doesn't look like that. Um, so it just shows what you can make with a, with a, with a, when you've got you know, haven't got a budget. You can make a really a proper feature film from it. So it doesn't. That's what I love about ind- independent yeah. film because you can just go out there. Um, and I think speaking to you guys now at the moment, you can see the passion all of you, got, all three of you've got <laughs> for it and and for the film itself. And I think that's what makes a film for me is um, far more valued sometimes than I can than a big massive like you know 200 million pound hollywood blockbuster because there's much more of a you've all put your soul into this because you all that's what you that's what you do you know scarlet you are an actor this is what you want to do this is what you know that's what you're passionate about and you tell you to you guys write it and direct it and you want to see it succeed you want to see it get out there on the screen and as much as obviously people like you know i don't know ryan reynolds not that he's going to listen to sue me so you know they're they're great and that's what they want to do as well but when i think when you get to that level it's not as i don't think there's much passion in there um he's the wrong person actually because he did deadpool didn't he and that was his passion but you know what i'm getting at this when independent film is very much a passion uh, project and you see that on screen a lot more and you can see the interactions from you guys uh and and you can it just oozes out the screen and and for me that's far more valuable than uh, than just any old big massive special effects you've got you know you concentrate on the story i really <laughs> ramble i'm sorry <laughs> no, maybe like budget wise like because yeah because it was so like we were kind of involved in literally every aspect we did like a lot of 
a lot of things ourselves that so bigger budget films like you know have the like director writing yeah. involved. Yeah. So it did mean that like every decision, even down to like you know kind of things that would normally be quite technical, but they were still like just kind of obviously more done yeah. by us often. Yeah, and so <laughs> and they even did like the special effects like. Um, uh, I just had that Zoom thing pop up then as well. If you did, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and then, like there, there were some things that we just messed up. Things like, oh, the, this time on this clock is wrong, and Hillary is like, right, I'll go in and fix every frame of that. <laughs> like, yeah, it's kind of funny. You end up doing that, but yeah, we know the film far too well. Like, I think the amount of times we've watched that, I actually can't count anymore. Yeah, like. I can't, I, especially if you just, if you can consider like frames of it, like not even just like beginning to end. Yeah. I mean, you're beginning to end a lot of times, but like the in between stages, you know, of adjusting. Scenes. Or like just things where we had like, um, there's a scene where like Scarlett's typing and it's got like a green screen because we were um, going to replace the words later. And then like Hillary had to like edit the, the computer's like moving around, she had to like do all that stuff and like, so it's like green every light single reflecting. frame you have to like paint out the green light and it's like yeah it's weird how well we know it and then sometimes I still I'm like oh I'll watch it this time with people but then you're like I'm surprised I got through that I don't know like every single frame so well yeah well, definitely a passion project for you there because you've been <laughs> it. I was going to ask a question, which, uh, but I don't think is valid now because I see how you t- I was going to say, how, obviously, as sisters for you working together and writing together. Um, how was how's that work? How does that go? But you, you looking at you both, it's just it sounds like it's great, but do you, you know, but as sisters, do you ever <laughs> get that yeah, you know, get that experience between? Yeah, we was like. Um... Yeah, it's funny because we live together as well, so it's like every kind of every day is is pretty similar. Yeah. Uh, Especially at the moment. <laughs> oh, yeah, <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, I think it's really good because there's always. I think if I was doing it alone, I'd find it really difficult because there's so much. Like there's every day, there's like something that goes wrong. I think with like you just. Sometimes you just feel like you're putting out fires a lot and um or like, you know, you need someone to complain to or like, I just think doing it alone would be so hard. Mm-hmm. So you just need someone who has your back. Like I think even if I didn't have Hillary, I'd want to be in like a duo or something. Just mm-hmm. because I just don't understand if we do it alone. I'm like, how? How do you do it? Yeah, it's impressive. <laughs> <laughs> it's like this. Yeah. yeah, I can it's imagine. Fine. There is so much to that. And obviously, you know, I mean, I think there was someone I interviewed once and uh, they were husband and wife um, and they'd done their own independent film and it was lovely. I mean, you know, their the ex air stewardess, he was an ex crooner from Argentina. Uh, great good. But what you just said about having to do everything yourself, that's what they did because they were, you know, they, the, the film was called The Remake, I think, but they, they're actually everything, even the actress, so like Scarlett, would have been involved in moving the set around because it was all in someone's house, like you said. So they were, each yeah. every single person was, you know, the set there was a set directors and everything in the set, and the props were all being moved around by everybody in the cast and having to be replaced as soon yeah. as they finished, and everyone was involved with it. And I think that's that it's it's a nice thing, it's a great great feeling to have then, and then seeing it on the big uh, seeing it on the screen and stuff. So. I'm, I'm the, forgive my ignorance on this, but where, is this going to be on the big screen? Are we going to go see festivals? Is that how it's going to? Well, it it been? Was, but then, um, so we started cinema um, and we had planned to go to like, um, well, we, it was in uh, London and, oh, I was about to say, no, we didn't. No, we literally only got up. We only got yeah. a couple of screenings and we had like a whole cinema tour planned. Yeah, um, and then lockdown. Our first two and then lockdown. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, we had a nice premiere at Prince yeah. Charles in London, so that was very really nice. And then we had another screening, and then, yeah, and then the cinema shut down. So. Yeah, the last screening we had was literally, like, on the day that like, everything was closing. <laughs> it was, like, <laughs> um, but, yeah, and those, those went really well. It was really nice, like... It was a shame, because it felt like a really good kickoff, and, like, yeah, but, so yeah. we were pretty sad. But, yeah. but now it's out, it's out on VOD, so, um, so, yeah, at least everyone can see it now, so that's nice. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's very true. I'm sure you can probably get, you know, you can try and get that, and maybe hopefully get that again. And um, once lockdown's finished, you can, you know, maybe try and get another, another screen, another set of screenings up there because that'll be lovely. Like, like one year anniversary or something will be quite fun. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> that'd, be, that'd be pretty cool. How are you finding lockdown, Scarlett, as well, yourself, obviously, as an actor? How are you finding that? I'll just throw, throw that in because it's three months I mean, actually, luckily, I'm not an actor currently. I'm a student again. Oh, OK. So um, for me, it's not been too different from my life of sitting at my desk all day, <laughs> every day anyway. Um, but it's, yeah, I'm quite ready to go out and do things now, I think. <laughs> yeah. I've got to say that's that's what working nights, apart from obviously my you know my lockdown haircut, which I did myself last week. If you couldn't have told that, yeah, I really... <laughs> <laughs> I <don't know. laughs> well, I feel like I don't want to take full blame for this. <laughs> I locked off some random bits. Yeah, I, I, I have got on my desk. I have a pair of scissors, and it's like my thing that I do when I'm bored. I'm just like, <laughs> I see, okay. <laughs> it's like instead of browsing. So, Fair enough. Well, I got like, I got tired of my I get a fringe and I, if it gets too long over the years and stuff. So I was like, right, Amazon clippers. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just experimenting and seeing just how bad this can get before I actually <laughs> touch it with anything. <laughs> Excellent. I mean, um, yeah, I was going to say for my job, it's the same as yours, um, Scarlett, for sitting there because I just sit in my study now and just look out the window when I'm working or obviously working, but it's no different to what I do anyway. So, um, it's, and I guess for you guys as well, it might be creative if you've been able to write some more. Or if you found, obviously, you've probably been working really hard yeah, on this. Yeah, few weeks especially, like, um, we were writing loads. Yeah. And we, like, it's nice being in the countryside as well because we there's such good walks around here. And we just go for, like, kind of writing walks. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? They are. They are. Why did yeah. you? <laughs> I don't know. We, we um, are not done on walks. Yeah. No, it, it, it goes, like, no, it, it does. It does work quite well, actually, because especially when you're like trying to, yeah, I don't know. It's quite. It's quite good when you're, you don't know quite what you're writing yet, and then you just talk about it the whole walk, and then when you come back, you're kind of ready. Mm-hmm. Um, it's best when we go for a walk. You've got a problem. I guess like if you yeah. write up until, and then you're like, I'm having a problem with this bit. Let's go for a walk, and then by the time you come back, like, yeah, we've got so many things, so many ideas. So. Yeah. That's pretty cool. We're nice and creative. Yeah, it's nice and creative walks. Like I mean, I'm, I'm 400 meters from the sea where I am, so I've got that luxury as well, where I can go out. So I do feel sorry for people who can't, haven't got that. Um, there's people, you know, who haven't got that luxury. But I can't. I'm not creative like that. I will go out and think, but I'm usually cycling with my son, so I've got him jabbering about Minecraft or something all the way. So I can't, <laughs> you know. Um, but it's it's a nice it's nice to have that. I mean, that's part of you know lockdown is i mean there's various things go through your mind you can actually create a lot more i think and think um so it hasn't has, has had I can't speak has had its benefits uh, I, I think for for that as well as the huge downside obviously that cinemas are closed and everything almost creative arts are going yeah. uh, <laughs> just closed down which is the biggest shame of all um have you guys ever done theater work at all in your, in your time anything with theater have- no okay i get Instead terrible stage fright <laughs> do you <laughs> yes awful <laughs> i don't know why films were fine but <laughs> it's just i just don't know how people get up there and all those people i think that's the difference with a, with a film you know because if you get it wrong i think obviously we've got the cameras things you, you can redo it yeah so i think when you're on stage um it, it can go cover I, I did it years ago and it was you know if it goes wrong it goes wrong um, I was doing Macbeth and smoking a pipe and, and the pipe's tobacco. This is in front of 300 children because it was school kids when I was at university. I bit the pipe and the tobacco flew out and we were right in the middle of all these kids who then obviously end up burst out laughing and there's us doing this really big, you know, very, very Shakespearean <laughs> <laughs> um, detailed speech um, with all these teenagers wetting themselves laughing around you because you just saw this thing just slowly fly out and go down. <laughs> and then I sat, I, sat, I sat on stage during the night, the, the night guardsman, who's a comic character in a way, and I thought everyone was just laughing at the words that I was saying because it was quite comical. It wasn't. It was because I was wearing a night dress and I've never worn one before and I didn't realise that I was just flashing basically to the entire... <laughs> 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 Luckily, I had boxer shorts on, but you know, it's, 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 yeah, so things like that when you're in film, you can edit out and redo. <laughs> so when, yeah. when you're on stage, I can, I can definitely get the stage fright bit because it's just, yeah, you suddenly see all those people in front of you and it's quite. <laughs> I think we really like as well, like the level of control you can have with film. And like, mm-hmm. yeah, I like being able to edit, like, just be like, I think you can, you can just change something so much. 
And I think in theatre, you're just giving up so much. And you can kind of do such subtle things with film as well. Like it's like, oh look, the way they move their eyes just then, like makes this whole the like makes like implies this whole other emotion. Yeah. And then it's like in theatre, I feel like so much of that must must be kind of lost. So you just have to kind of hope that it happens every night as well. And it. Yeah, you hope this all captures it. Yeah. I like that, especially when man, and especially when like an actor does something really nice, and they're like, I'm I'm so glad I got that on camera, and then. Yeah, some nice things just come like that. That's lost. That's lost forever. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I guess the, the, um, Maisie's first part of that film. And then you know, you're right because if you're on stage, that could a lot of that could get missed because there's a lot of facial expressions while you're doing the, um, you know, you've got your inner monologue, monologue going and everything like that. So things like that could get missed if you're on stage. Whereas in film, you can you can like you just said, you can focus on a face and your facial expressions and the. And the panic that sets in as he suddenly, you know, as a guy he's turning around <laughs> and things like that. It's like, oh, <laughs> I've been there. Uh, I've done... <laughs> um, thankfully, when I was sixteen, obviously, you know, it's not you're not classed as a stalker at that age. When you're... <laughs> but it is... no, I think you can class me easy as a stalker at that point. Yeah, you probably sure. could have. Done, yeah. <laughs> Actually, yeah, you're right. In that point of the story, I think yeah, you genuinely were. <laughs> But again, I mean, there was, so, there was it's such a fun film to watch. Um, uh, as like we've mentioned a few times, the, the scene on the bus was great. The, this, the words coming out of, out of the Ben when when actually what he was thinking was completely different. And it's like, yeah, you know, it just it's that typical teen of I want to say this. What should I say? What should I say? Why? <laughs> so, you know, it comes to it. <laughs> it's, just, it's it's just spot on. It really is. Um, so I've got to say, it's a thoroughly enjoyable film to watch for that. Um, you're welcome. I'm, I'm kind of running out now because I'm trying to think of the whole thing. Uh, yeah, so have you got anything future uh, planned for the next steps for this? Or, or, or for, obviously, now this one's over. Um, well, we're coming out of South Korea next month. That's what's <laughs> happening with the uh, soundtrack 16. Um, which we've got quite excited about because we really enjoyed seeing all the posters and stuff. Um, about that recently, and then um, yeah, we're also working on our next film, which is um, which is one adaptation of Much Do Like Nothing, mm-hmm. which is kind of um, it's similar to Soundtrack Sixteen in that it's like kind of teen teenagers um, and like coming of age, but um, we use like all the Shakespearean dialogue, so it's kind of an interesting mesh of <laughs> the two of them. Yeah. Which I hope works. But it's yeah. kind of very modern teen, but then also like deep Shakespeare. Got some like tragic bits in there. Yeah. So yeah, that's um, we're kind of actually just finishing it up, the edit yeah. and stuff. So that should be done. Which is pretty exciting. Yeah. Yeah. I did see the credits. That's what I was going to ask you as well, because I noticed in the film as well. There's very few adults in the film, and it's very centred, and it does draw us out. I picked on that one as well. There's obviously a few. M- key characters or adults in there but it's very central on the children themselves and that experience uh, and I thought that was a very good way of, of, of using that and utilizing it as well because you you know it possibly could get drawn out as well but you've definitely you're keeping that focus on the young coming to age you the young people itself and that was a really um, a powerful thing as well I noticed and I saw that in Much Ado as well because when I saw what that was about I was like um, I gathered it might have something about Much Ado about nothing but I wasn't too yeah. sure from the reading the description but <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking it seems to say the same sort of sort of coming to, you know um, yeah, coming to the and everyone else is kind of I mean I guess yeah, tech, yeah they're like 20-ish old, yeah. So. yeah I guess it's like the stage above the because they're kind of um, what we're even at is that they're like university students and um the guys, the guys who are usually like coming home from war, like coming home from a rugby match, and they're like all a rugby team. So it's like the stage above that. So like we've done school, and now we're like university. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I quite I like I like doing things with people that age. I think it's it's quite fun. The coming of age. I guess it's just what we know as well because yeah. we're, I guess recently um <laughs> <laughs> i'm looking forward to your quarter life crisis film excellent excellent i mean well rugby is war to be honest uh, yeah, so, so, so it's very good so, very good to use that analogy i so said when i was in uni we did the ta and um i wasn't in the rugby team but i went to watch our rugby team with the university officer training corps play and they played the paras 
and three of them came off, three of our lads, not the Paris, by the way, came off with broken arms, broken legs, because <laughs> they didn't play rugby. They just saw kids and thought, you jumped up little such and such and just and went straight for the straight for the students to just kick the hell out of them. So, yeah, that put me off rugby quite a lot for, a, <laughs> for many, yeah, uh, many years afterwards. Yeah, I, tried to do, to do, yeah, I tried to do, like, the university, uh, like, I went to the kind of, like, taster thing that they do, mm-hmm. you know, go for, like, a couple of weeks and then see if you want to join. And, like, my first session, I just got a concussion. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> yeah. yeah, and the speaker which had cauliflower here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know I have cauliflower here. Yeah. I was like, mm, I don't do that for that's like long term rugby player. <laughs> <laughs> I had a ringing in, but I mean, it's probably just a concussion. <laughs> yeah, kind of dumb things like that. Do no, I didn't do that, but yeah. <laughs> 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 Why are people so bad at rugby and stuff? No, they're not actually no one playing rugby, but <laughs> um, yeah, it, it, there's kind of like a running theme that everyone in the film is bad at sport. It's kind of like a joke, but I hate it because it's not that way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, excellent, excellent. How about you, Scarlett? What, have you got anything planned? Obviously, you're a student now at the moment, but yeah, so um, studies for at least the next three years. <laughs> Lovely. And, uh, see what happens after. Excellent, excellent. What are you studying? Can I ask? Uh, medicine. So. Oh wow! Very topical. Yes, yeah, moment. very topical at the moment. Yeah. Are you sure you still want to study after seeing what's coming? <laughs> well, ask me again in September when yeah. I start on the wards. <laughs> oh my god! Uh, yeah, no. Well done. Thank you for that. It's a, it's a great, it's a really good profession, obviously, to go into. So yeah, um, good luck with that. That's it's really good. Ariel, sort out that cauliflower ear. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Uh, so I'll wrap this up. There's one question I'm going to ask you because this is a signature question of mine. It's got nothing to do with film. It's got nothing to do with anything. Um, it actually came to me because I actually one of my guests used to work. He was in Star Wars, but he was he's worked with Jim Henson for 30 years. You know the Muppets and stuff. So you're going to tell me now. You're going to be too young to actually remember any of these. But if you could have a Muppet created after you, what Muppet would it be and why? It's a great personality question. Until you turn around and say, I don't know what the Muppets are. (laughs) (laughs) I I saw Muppets Christmas Carol, but I think that's it. Scarlett, do you want to begin this one? You you take it first. (laughs) I haven't seen any Muppets. Um, I think fittingly, I'd probably have a very Christmassy Muppet. Okay. Because I'm quite a a Christmassy person. I was a Christmas elf for a few few years (laughs) during the acting career, and I loved it. So... uh, Oh, right. yeah. Pig Muppet. Oh, what, sorry? Mm-hmm. Pig Muppet. Oh, okay. Like, Pig Muppet? Like, Miss Piggy, <laughs> like Miss Piggy type thing, yeah. I know there's a Frog Muppet, but I don't think I'm a Frog Muppet. <laughs> Maybe I, I'm in Green Muppet. Though. That's Kermit, right? That's Kermit, yeah. That's yeah. like the main Muppet. It is, yeah, Kermit. <laughs> so. You know what? I don't think it's a Muppet, but do you know, you know that like big yellow bird? Oh, Big Bird. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> That one is that a muffin? <laughs> well, can be, yeah, yeah, same sort of thing, yeah. <laughs> oh gosh, I was going to say the Muppets Christmas Carol actually, surprisingly, is one of the most accurate Dickens versions of a Christmas Carol as well. So <laughs> it's is really, it? it is, yeah, it's very, very true to the original novel, which is strange considering it's a frog and a, and an alien with a big nose and, and rats and stuff doing it. But uh, it's become a tradition in our house anyway. Oh yeah, it's a it is a massive family tradition. Um, I can't believe you two haven't seen it on the Muppets, no. <laughs> My boyfriend would be outraged. He almost like, split up with me when he had, I hadn't watched it. <laughs> oh, that's terrible. Um, but yeah, before I wrap this, is there anything you guys would like to say to people who are listening or watching um, about maybe how... Yeah, I've got to watch the film. Yeah, I've got to watch the film. Soundtrack to 16. It's Soundtrack 16. It's on all the platforms. In the UK. In the UK. Do you want me to list them? I'll list them. Yep, go on. Microsoft, Sky Store, Google Play, YouTube, iTunes. iTunes. I think there's one more. Yeah, there is. You find it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> cool. Scarlett, anything you'd like to say? Um, I guess thank you for people who do watch it and have watched it or um, supported it. Yeah, I agree with that too. <laughs> <laughs> and 
Thank you for having us. No, no, yes. thank you for being on. Thank you. <laughs>